Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Polycystic kidney disease, or PKD, is an inherited disorder where clusters of cysts develop within the kidneys. The cysts cause the kidneys to enlarge and lose function over time. Now, the cysts are benign, that is, they're non-cancerous. Uh, they're, they're sacs that are filled with fluid. PKD can also cause cysts to develop in other parts of your body, mainly the liver. The disease can cause serious complications as well, including high blood pressure and kidney failure. The FDA recently approved the drug Tolvoptin. You did Tolvoptin. 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 You did good. <laughs> it's for our patients with polycystic kidney disease. Mayo Clinic was instrumental in the research for this drug and will be one of the only few places to initially offer the treatment as part of its clinical practice. And here to discuss is Mayo Clinic nephrologist, Dr. Fouad Shabib. Welcome to the program, Dr. Shabib. Thank you for having me. Dr. Shabib, great to have you here. And it sounds like a real advance uh, for people who have polycystic kidney disease. Absolutely. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the condition itself. So polycystic kidney disease, um, there's two types. There's one which is called autosomal recessive, and the other one is autosomal dominant. And that refers to the inheritance pattern. It refers to the inheritance. So the first one, the recessive, uh, it usually affects the, chi the children, and then it, it leads to kidney failure and some uh, liver issues as well. But the most common type, which we will uh, talk more about, is the autosomal dominant, which affects mostly the adults. Uh, it's the most common inherited kidney disease. And as you mentioned, so these patients actually are born with some fluid-filled sacs, uh, so th that are called cysts, but they don't cause any major issues uh, early on, uh, mostly high blood pressure, so hypertension. Sometimes they can cause some bleeding. And then later on, uh, these cysts grow and kind of uh, damage the kidney and lead to kidney failure. So, yeah. so one kind, uh, the, the recessive, the one that's probably less common, yes. uh, can affect you as a child. Exactly. And the more common type uh, will affect you as an adult, but they're both called polycystic kidney disease. Exactly. Yes. How common? So the autosomal dominant is, uh, as I mentioned, the most common. So it's one in 500 to one in 1,000 uh, uh, in the population. So there's about 600,000 patients with PKD or ADPKD, the autosomal dominant type, in the United States and about 12 to 13 million worldwide. And what happens if patients aren't treated? I mean, if it starts off shut, wrecking your kidneys, and then what happens? Yeah, so for decades, the patients who uh, have the family history, so they've seen their great-grandparents, their parents going through uh, this, this disease, they've never imagined that there's a kind of something to slow down the disease progression or the cyst from growing. So for many decades, the only thing would be treating high blood pressure, making sure you're healthy, and then once you reach the end-stage renal disease where you need either dialysis or transplantation, uh, that's usually the, the treatment. So there was no treatment, basically. And for the past uh, decade and a half, about 15 years, uh, so here at Mayo Clinic, uh, Dr. Torres in his lab, Vicente Torres, kind of found what's the basis of uh, these cysts from, uh, that leads to the cyst to be growing and filling with, uh, with fluids. Uh, and found that if we target uh, the V2 receptor, so that's the receptor that the thirst hormone acts upon on the kidney, if you block that receptor, then you lead to lower what we call cyclic MP. So it's a molecule that drives the, for that drives the cyst for, uh, in growing and filling with the cyst. So he found if we block that, then we can slow down the disease progression. And then we, we took that over to clinical trials and then found that this is the medication that would slow down the disease progression. So it's not a cure, but it slows down uh, the disease uh, from, so it, it kind of delays the need for kidney transplant or dialysis at earlier age, and hopefully they gain more years of good kidney function with the treatment. Even more than what previously would have been the line of treatment, which would be try to control your high blood pressure, still do that, but this medication now can push off any potential problems. Years, decades, what? So yes, so treating high blood pressure is very, very important for these patients. And there has been some clinical trials. It did not show that it's gonna delay too much the progression. So we needed some kind of treatment that would really slow down. So tolvaptan is the first uh, treatment for this disease. Uh, so usually the best is to start the patients on, these, uh, on this medication early on. So when their kidney function is still normal, 
but their kidneys are still making these cysts. So if we start it early on, they have to be on it for several years, for decades, probably 20, 20, 30 years, and they will gain hopefully several years back. Mm -hmm. And usually we say if someone is progressing fast, usually every four years of treatment uh, will delay the, the need for dialysis by one year. Uh, so if you're on it for 20 years, it's probably an extra four or five years. Uh, there's not big, uh, long, long studies because it's a chronic sure. disease that needs many years to study. But so far, this is kind of the expectation. That's how it's going to it's going to delay the disease. Wow, fantastic. So how do most patients find out that they have this disease? And have you ever seen a case where there wasn't a family history? Uh, so mostly, uh, the majority of the patients would have someone in the family that has the disease, and they've been so familiar with that. Usually, we diagnose by screening with an ultrasound. Uh, so you actually look at the kidneys and see the cysts. Exactly. So we look at the kidneys, we see the cyst, and we have kind of criteria on how many cysts, and depending on the age, because the, the older you are, the more cysts you'll have. Uh, so to diagnose, first we do the screening by ultrasound, and then we can do a CT scan or MRI to look more at, at kind of the, the kidney cyst and how big is the kidney. And then we can um, give a prognosis or how the patient will do depending on how big the cysts are. And if the patient wasn't aware that they had a family history of polycystic disease, what might be their first symptoms? What might lead them to come in and see you? Yeah, there's about 5 to 10% of the patients that don't have a family history. So that could be either a new mm. mutation, so a new defect in the gene that's just happened in these patients. And usually the first sign is either high blood pressure or they get a, uh, some kind of bleeding from the cyst, so they see blood in the urine uh -huh. and they get pain in, the f in their back or uh, sometimes an infection in these cysts and they get a fever and then a pain and then uh, they get a imaging in the ER probably and then they get a CAT scan or some kind of imaging and they'll see these cysts and they will diagnose them with So cysts. high blood pressure or blood in the urine? High blood pressure and blood in the urine. For uh, people who have polycystic kidney disease or there's a whole family history they've known for generations, it's probably in my deck of cards here, um, what is the takeaway? What do those patients need to know? So it's really an exciting news for all these patients. For example, yesterday I offered the treatment for one of the patients who, re who kind of told me the story that even in the 1800s, they know that they had some kind of nephritis or some kind of kidney disease. And actually when she knew that there's an FDA-approved drug, she started crying actually for several minutes. It was very exciting news. So for these patients, uh, I would say they first they need to make sure that they're getting good health care. So uh, in terms of blood pressure, and then see if they are eligible for this medication. Uh, so not all the patients would need to be treated, in fact. So some are slow progressors, so their cysts are small enough and small number that they don't need to be on any treatment except just being healthy and high, uh, treat the blood pressure. But some patients will progress very fast, and they will need uh, dialysis in their 40s, 50s, and these patients will benefit most from the treatment. So it's important for these patients to be checked to know where they kind of are, are they slow or fast progressing, and then uh, probably screen their kids as well. Now that there's a treatment, we're recommending that these patients, if they are uh, the, the kids, if they are adults, uh, to kind of be checked for, for this disease because there's something to do about it now. Is the drug widely available? Uh, so it's kind of where it's very new, so it just got approved in May and in the market uh, as of June. And at Mayo Clinic, we just started this month the the clinic, because there's many logistics around this medication, it's uh, regulated by the FDA, and we need a lot of blood testing every month for the first year and a half. So now we have the support staff, the nurses that are uh, involved with us, and the physicians. So it is available. Um, it's kind of expensive drug, so probably it's still new, and how the insurance will cover and so forth. But we're working with all the patients who are asking about it, and we're kind of uh, uh, doing some awareness to kind of let these patients come to their uh, kidney doctors, be checked, and also check their kids. And what's next in the research? Uh, a lot of things are exciting actually at Mayo. So we have a uh, great Mayo PKD Center, and we do a lot of translational research in a way that we do uh, research in the lab and try to uh, translate it to the patients to, to get new treatments. So we have a new target actually we're very excited about, and a couple of drugs, uh, medications that could be effective, so hopefully that would be the next uh, good treatment for PKD uh, to help not only slow down but hopefully cure the disease and 
not have any patients needing dialysis or transplantation. Wow, that would be fabulous, wouldn't it? All right, the new drug is called Tovaptan, and our guest, Mayo Clinic nephrologist, kidney specialist, Dr. Fouad Shabib. Dr. Shabib, thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me.